In this repair video, we're going to be working on an iPad Pro 12.9 inch. This is the second gen and it came in for no power. We already disassembled the tablet and the first thing I want to do is plug the charging cable in and see the charging rate. So if you notice, the screen is showing 5 volts at 2 amps draw and then it's going off. 5 volts at 2 amps draw and then it goes off. So it's coming on and off, on and off, on and off. We have something wrong with this tablet. The going on and off thing could be the CPU, could be the RAM, could be power IC. It could be a short, we do not know. It could be a lot of things. I want to check the board under a thermal cam and see if we see anything obvious. So what I want to do is press down on the battery connector because right now we remove the screw from the battery connector. So the battery is not making a connection with the board. I have the charging cable plugged in and I'm going to press on the battery connector and see if we see anything obvious. And look at that. Look at that. The chip got hot and then it's turning off. One particular chip is getting hot and then back off. Let me tilt that tablet a bit so we can see which chip this is. Go to manual mode and I'm going to increase the temperature boundaries a bit so we can pinpoint the chip. See? So the chip is trying to power on, then it's going off. On and off, on and off. Now the problem could be the chip or it could be something else that is causing the chip to power on and off. Right there. And this is a power IC. This chip is a power IC and power ICs can fail for no reason. And uh, which one is this? Let me see. The 00090, we should have that one in stock. I have a couple of power ICs for iPads and 343S00090, yes, I do have it. Great. So let's go ahead and replace the chip and see if that will solve our problem. But before I start the repair, I want to introduce Big Master. Big Master is here today and he's the nephew of Big Boss. He just wanted to say hi yeah. and he's the future of this business. He want to learn the business and he's very excited to repair stuff. Yeah. This morning he came in and we gave him three devices. He fixed two of them and he still has one more to fix. So his grandpa, Big Boss, we called him Big Master because he's a very smart kid, Big right? Master. Big Master, right? Yeah. Okay. So everyone give it up to Big Master. And you're going to keep learning, right? Yeah. All right. Let me finish the tablet and then I can give you more stuff to work on. Yeah. Okay, great. If you want, you can watch. Yeah. So I have a strong reason to believe that we have a problem with this IC. We had a similar issue in the past on the iPad Pro 10.5. So right now we're going to apply heat onto that chip. And out. Great. And look at the mess under that chip. Pin number one is on the bottom left. We're going to apply flux. We need to clean this area. Clean all the unleaded solder. And then we can solder our new chip. Fume extractor on. The area is crowded, so we have to be careful not to knock off or apply solder to any nearby components. All right, right now I'm mixing leaded solder with unleaded so we can lower the melting temperature of unleaded, that way it's easier 
to wick those solder balls off the board. And we have a bridge here, that's not a problem. We're gonna have to get rid of this bridge. Let's go ahead and clean up. Now we're gonna use our awesome technique to desolder those solder balls. We're not gonna use our soldering iron and wick, but rather we're gonna use our hot tweezers and wick. And just like that. Look at how beautiful this technique is. And now it's time to solder the new chip. The camera went off for a second, I just turned it back on. It's a good thing we did not lose much of that video. I always have to keep watching the video and the microphone to make sure both of them are recording. The orientation of the chip should be like this. So right now I'm gonna hold that chip down in place. We're gonna apply heat. Let go. And the chip made a connection. And now we're gonna reflow. Let me rotate the board. Okay, the chip went in place. Clean up. And will that solve our problem? Look at the soldering of that chip. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we do not have any bridges anywhere. Because right now we still have liquid on there and we're gonna get at least one comment from a person saying, oh, there's a bridge. There's a bridge right there. There are no bridges, okay? Everything is good. Right, let's turn the fume extractor off. Okay, so moment of truth. We replaced the chip and we're gonna try and see if that will fix our problem. I mean, the problem is not the TriStar chip because the first thing that we do when testing any iPad is we plug the TriStar tester and we see if we have a problem with the TriStar chip or the charging flex cable and everything is a pass. So we know that the charging circuit is good. The on and off of the power IC as we have seen under the thermal cam could be due to a lot of things. We may have a problem with the RAM, we may have a problem with the CPU, we may have a problem with the power IC itself. And right now, honestly, I do not want to waste a lot of time on this tablet. We went straight for the power IC and we're gonna hope that that will fix our problem. One way to find out. We're gonna be using the mechanic charging station. I did not have time to review this item. I did mention that we got this in stock and we already sold about half of our stock. Right now, if you notice, the screen went into a sleep mode, but if you tap on it, it came back on. And maybe I can quickly go over this. We have seven USB ports. One of them is a QC 3.0. This is a smart port. And we also have a USB-C charging port. I use the USB-C port if I want to test a Samsung phone that has a USB-C port, or maybe I want to test a Nintendo Switch. I plug the USB-C cable here, and I plug it in and test. It goes up to 12 volts. But now, since we're going to be testing our iPad, I can plug this cable into any one of those seven ports. Maybe we can plug it in the QC 3.0 port. And also I can be charging my phone at the same time. It supports wireless charging. 
right there. The phone is charging now. Okay. And if we plug the cable, you know what? For the sake of simplicity, let me take this out so you do not get confused. Ready? One, two, plug. And I need to push down on the battery connector. And look at that. Look at that. 5.2 volts and 1.8 amps. It was 1.5. Now it went up to 1.8, so it's stable now. It's not shutting off anymore. The power IC did fix the problem. Look at this. 5.2 volts at 1.8 amps. That's amazing. Fixed. The tablet is fixed. Just to demonstrate how this device works, I can also put my phone, I can charge it wirelessly. And now it switched to the wireless charging of the phone. And then every three seconds, it's going to switch between the iPad and back to any device that is plugged in. So if I have five devices plugged in, every three seconds, it switches between every single port. Right now, it's switching between the wireless charging so I can see the reading and it's switching back to this tablet. And now the tablet is charging at 5.2 volts and 2.2 amps. Awesome. Look at this, 5.2 volts and 2.2 amps. Now it's going to switch back to the wireless charging, 10 watts. Awesome, awesome. So I can have seven USB ports plugged in and the device is going to switch between them. And I can also have the wireless charging all running at the same time. It's an amazing tool. I mean, usually I use this and I still use it because it's portable. I can move this anywhere around. But now on the bench, I'm going to keep this one here. And anytime we are testing, we're going to be testing using this device. A very solid device, color display, and it's just amazing. One thing to note is this device came with the international power plug. So we have to use ours. It's a two prong plug. And the one that came with this one only works internationally. So we had to use ours. Mechanic did not ship this device with the cable for the US, but rather with the cable for international countries. You know, the circular two prong cable. And I do mention this in the listing that the device does not come with the cable. So do not be surprised if you got the international cable. We are selling this without the cable. The cable is very cheap. If we got those cables in, I'm going to include them with the device. But right now, the device is selling without the US cable. We do have one in the shop here, and this is what we are using. Just a regular two prong cable. And right now, the iPad is fixed. Replacing the power IC fixed the problem. That's amazing, because if replacing that chip did not fix the problem, we're going to have to deem this device in no fix, because problem is likely the CPU or RAM. And we do not waste our time working on CPU or RAM. We let somebody else waste their time doing that. We have 6 million devices that we need to do, and we just cannot afford to waste our time on things that will take a lot of our time, and then maybe a fix, maybe a no fix. And maybe before we end the video, let me connect the screen and do one final testing. It will only take a minute, so why not connect the display just to ensure that the tablet is functioning? And the display does not have the original button on it, but that's not why this tablet came here. Okay, so I have the cables plugged in. And I need to press and hold the battery connector and plug that charging cable in. And now if you noticed, device display went to sleep, just tap it and it comes back on. When I first got this one, I looked at this display and I said, why is it dim from the edges? It's bright from the center and it's dim from the edges. It's the way the backlight of that display is. But once you see the reading, everything is super clear. Let's plug that cable. Five point two at yes, yes, right there, right there. And the screen has an issue. <laughs> we did not open that screen. It was open to begin with. Some people may ask, what if the customer blames you for that faulty screen? The customer cannot blame us for anything. 
because number one, when they sign our mailing form and mail their device over, they accept all risks involved working on their device. That's number one. And number two is the screen already came disconnected. We did not disconnect the screen. So whoever disconnected the screen may have inflicted damage onto that screen, but that has nothing to do with us. I mean, you can tell that the screen has a black home button. We're going to let the customer know that we fixed his tablet and that he has a problem with the screen. If customer wants us to replace his screen, it's going to be an extra cost. But otherwise, we can just mail this tablet back to him like this. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.